Good day and salutations. Today's briefing, China's Type 076 assault carrier. Intel assessment on the world's largest amphibious assault ship. What capability does it bring and how might it be used? As the Type 076 takes shape, we now have a clear idea of what capability it might have and how it might be employed operationally. First and foremost, the Type 076 is an amphibious assault ship, not an aircraft carrier, albeit one with the unique capability for an amphibious assault ship in that it has the ability to launch aircraft by catapult. But we must keep this fact in mind as we discuss the ship's role and capabilities. Its primary role is to get troops ashore and quickly, primarily by air cushion vehicles and rotary winged aircraft. This briefing will look at the deck layout and other characteristics of the ship and provide an assessment of its likely capability parameters and operational environment. We now have a better understanding of the likely deck layout of the Type 076 and it clearly has a twin island configuration, something also found on the UK's Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers and the Italian Trieste landing helicopter dock. We should expect the forward or navigation island to also be able to handle flight ops and the aft or flight ops island to also be able to handle navigation, providing a level of redundancy. The flight deck dimensions, note not overall dimensions, suggest a length of around 250 metres and a width of about 45 metres. What might the flight deck layout look like at completion? This image shows the key elements of the flight deck and their relevant positions to each other. It's illustrative and not to scale. As mentioned, the 076 has a twin island configuration with the islands separated by the starboard deck edge elevator. On the port side, we have a full length electromagnetic catapult close to the same length as those found on the Fujian carrier, a jet blast deflector and the port deck edge elevator. At this stage it appears as though the arresting wires will be positioned on the centre line, meaning the 076 has an axial or straight flight deck. With only one electromagnetic catapult and likely not able to conduct simultaneous launch and recovery operations, fixed wing sortie rates will not be high. But if the fast jets are primarily for reconnaissance and initial strike, the axial deck layout is likely sufficient for purpose. The last time we saw a ship with a catapult and arresting wires on an axial deck was in the 1950s, but this was an aircraft carrier. So how does the 076's layout compare to that of modern amphibious assault ships? So let's look at the other leading amphibious assault ships with a full length flight deck and a flattable dock or a well deck. Note the dimensions given are for the flight deck, not overall dimensions. These examples include China's Type 075, Australia's Canberra class of two ships, which are based on the Spanish Juan Carlos and joined by the Turkish Anadolu, the Italian Trieste, and the US WASP class, chosen as the in-service America class, don't have well decks. The Type 075 and Juan Carlos family have the same aircraft elevator geometry with a larger centrally positioned stern elevator and a smaller inboard elevator forward. Note the Type 075 lacks a ski jump for Stovall aircraft as found on the Juan Carlos family but this lack of the ski jump then allows for more usable area on the flight deck for aircraft. The Italian Trieste is larger than both the Type 075 and the Juan Carlos family and is designed with fixed wing aircraft operations being more important to its role. It has two deck edge elevators which are situated in the same geometry relative to each other as those found on the US WASP class, although reversed in that the port elevator is aft of the starboard elevator, with the reverse being the case for the WASP. Also, note the Trieste has a ski jump and the WASP class doesn't. 
While the 076 is unique, the most accurate comparison that can be made to the Type 076 is the Italian Trieste LHD, as they are both primarily amphibious assault ships, but with good fixed wing aircraft operations capabilities. Returning to the Type 076's deck layout, regardless of the main reason for going with the twin island configuration, whether due to propulsion layout and or flight operations, this has allowed the Type 076 to place the starboard deck edge elevator further forward, in this case between the two islands, than it would otherwise have been, likely leading to more efficient and effective use of the dedicated aircraft hangar, as the two aircraft elevators are further apart. The position of the elevators can also have a significant impact on flight operations. The port side deck edge elevator might impact fixed wing aircraft recovery operations, but the further aft positioning of this elevator should allow for a number of fast jets to be prepared behind the jet blast deflector. As mentioned, the MCATs on the 076 appear as long as those found on the Fujian carrier. If so, and all other things being equal, we should expect the 076 to be able to launch and recover all aircraft that the Fujian can. This would offer a significant capability enhancement if a Type 076 was to operate with the carrier 003 Fujian. One of these aircraft will likely be a navalised version of the GJ-11 Stealth UCAV unmanned combat aerial vehicle to be used for reconnaissance and strike missions and possibly the J-35 stealth fighter, which we will see on the carrier 003 Fujian and possibly on the Liaoning and Shandong. But as mentioned earlier, the 076 is primarily an amphibious assault ship and so needs to get troops ashore quickly. To do this, the 076 will rely on rotary-winged assets, including the Z-20 for tactical lift, Z-18, or Z8 for medium lift, and likely Z10, Z19, or possibly even the Z21 for attack reconnaissance missions. And by landing craft air cushioned, or LCACs, with at least two and likely three Type 726 LCACs to be carried. I think it less likely that the Type 076 will routinely deploy the PLA's numerous amphibious vehicles swimming ashore on their own. Instead, a likely operational concept could be for the Type 076 to stand off at some distance from the shore, launch fixed-wing stealth aircraft to conduct reconnaissance and the initial strike, and then move troops and equipment ashore by high-speed LCACs and rotary-winged assets, perhaps from around 75 kilometres or 40 nautical miles offshore. In summary, the PLA is creating a unique capability. An amphibious assault ship that has some catabar carrier capability, catapult-assisted takeoff but arrested recovery, and where a high fast jet sortie rate is not critical, unlike an aircraft carrier, yet also has the capability to move troops ashore by rotary ring assets and landing craft. So how might this capability be employed? The Type 076 could combine with the Liaoning or Shandong Stobar carriers, providing some additional fixed-wing aircraft capability to support them. Or, depending on the mission, it may be able to operate without a carrier, supporting the Type 075 landing helicopter docks and Type 071 landing ship docks. Additionally, the Type 076 offers a single vessel with a greater range of capabilities and operational flexibility than a traditional landing hel helicopter dock does. And finally, the installation of a catapult on an amphibious ship removes the need for Stovall fixed-wing aircraft, whose development is expensive and which come with a range payload trade-off for the aircraft. That concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers, so please subscribe, like and share. Until next time, Vale de Serre.